Michelle Malkin uh, joins us, best-selling author, syndicated columnist, and uh, host of a soon-to-be name show on Newsmax. Uh, Michelle, actually, does that show have a name yet? Uh, I, I think we want to do a big reveal, so I will. Uh, I'll plead the fifth on that for now, Greg. All right. I gotta you'll be the first to know. You'll get the scoop. It could be, it be, we'll call it Michelle Malkin reports. But look, you heard uh, Sergeant uh, Sergeant Mullins there, and it, amid this tumult, there are actually politicians standing up and saying we should defund the police department right now. Um, from L.A., Minneapolis. I mean, this is serious. They're saying it with a straight face. This movement is taking off. Much to uh, my frustration, and I'm sure yours. Oh, yes. And for Americans who are aware of the history of far-left anti-cop agitation, this is not new. Uh, but it is escalating, I think, to an extent that we haven't seen since the late 60s and 70s. And if you think about the New York Police Department itself, of course, it has been targeted many times over the years. And for younger viewers, of course, they'll at least recall that during the Obama years, uh, so many cities were lit up in flames. And the chants that we heard, the vile chants from Antifa and extremists of Black Lives Matter, that cops are pigs, that they should be fried up like bacon, uh, definitely hearkened back to the 60s and 70s. So we're talking about a nearly four-decade-long history of a war on the police. And I think another thing that bears um, repeating and reminding Americans about uh, as well, Greg, is that many of these groups ally together, and it's a very parallel. So now you have Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And in the 60s and 70s, targeting and assassinating, of course, police officers from New York to San Francisco, coast to coast, were the Weather Underground, the Black Liberation Army, and the Black Panthers. Uh, there's a long intellectual history of this movement of dismantling police departments. And now the fuel has been poured on the fire with uh, everything that's happened since the George Floyd incident. And so they are exploiting a crisis, Greg. I mean, in a way, you've got to give credit to the left. They've always been focused and they always leverage and exploit these types of opportunities. And look, LA's already done it, right? They're slashing their police uh, department budget as some sort of sop uh, to these agitators and looters, looters, thinking that this is somehow going to appease them, but you cannot and you can never appease the unappeasable. I was really surprised to see Eric Garcetti, uh, who doesn't did not strike me as a total lunatic, uh, talk about slashing uh, $250 million for his own police department. Uh, that was kind of, quite frankly, a little bit scary. Uh, by the way, a lot of companies out there, an interesting piece in Medium, which is this uh, interesting kind of website forum for uh, thought. Many, many companies, 250, many mainstream companies like uh, from Burger King to Amazon are at least putting out supportive statements of groups like Antifa, uh, Black Lives Matter. Some of that I understand. Some of that I think, quite frankly, has gone way too far, and they're just trying to inoculate themselves from future trouble. What do you think is happening here? Oh, I think you're absolutely right, Greg. There is an attempt to sort of buy immunity by kneeling figuratively, metaphorically, and in some cases literally uh, to these agitation forces, to the forces that are sabotaging law and order. Everybody in the Fortune 500 world uh, has issued some sort of statement. I don't know if you check your email, Greg, like I did this week. Every company that I've bought anything from online or done business with, uh, even locally, is rushing out to put out some statement about anti-racism, buying into the, the foundational lies uh, that have led to the uh, Michael Brown incident and Trayvon Martin and, uh, you know, everything that Al Sharpton is responsible for going back uh, decades. And I think it's important for consumers to be aware of these kinds of things. So Ashley Ray Goldenberg, who is a, a great young, bright researcher, put this handy list together uh, so that if people want to, to vote with their pocketbooks, uh, they should look at this list and, and not do business with businesses that are out to destroy and cancel America. They are putting out these statements that are supportive of these uh, radical groups, and uh, they are very mainstream companies. Uh, you know, Al Sharpton's been shaking down a lot of these companies for years. Again, it's all about, hey, we don't want any trouble. 
And uh, I think that's what's going on here. Hey, by the way, Joe Biden. Ooh, another doozy from him. Check this out. We, do we really think this is as good as we can be as a nation? I don't think the vast majority of people think that. There are probably anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of the people out there that are just not very good people. That would be roughly, what, 30, 35 million people? And he's running yeah. for, he wants to get votes, doesn't he? No, apparently not, Greg. And I encourage him to keep opening his mouth and uh, giving away voters by the millions. As many have observed, quite obviously, this is very similar to the deplorable comment of Hillary Clinton, which was another real winner. And I, I disagree that uh, you can simply chalk all of this up to whatever cognitive challenges that uh, Joe Biden might be experiencing. I think in this case, you know, just like with the deplorable comment, the, the left re reveals itself. It shows its true colors and its contempt for the vast majority of law-abiding, peaceful people who are not racist, who are not hateful, and who have been smeared over and over again. That's a recipe for re-electing Donald Trump. So keep doing it, guys. Yeah, and I also think any time, and I sense that he was trying to win over folks of a different race, and whenever that happens, um, you see a lot of inauthenticity. Does yes. that make sense? You know, I mean. It, it, absolutely. Yeah. Pander Palooza. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Malkin, the one and only. Uh, check her out. Her show starts very soon here on Newsmax. Michelle, always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Take care, Greg. All right.